Hello there, I'm Joseph, and today we're here on our cherry farm in central Portugal, Fundal. Today, it's a bit of a wet one, and that's actually perfect for what we need. We're, uh, we're going to be spreading some muck in our cherry orchards today, and that's, uh, that's a job that we need to do every winter to keep our trees nice, happy and healthy, and well fed. Uh, fortunately, we have quite a lot of livestock on our farm here, as I'm sure most of you regular viewers know, and uh, that's very, very handy when it, comes to need, uh, when it comes to your muck spreading. It means that we've got more than enough compost and manure that we, can, that we can go around our whole orchard, all of our other trees, and spread that around. Today, yeah, it's a bit wet, it's a bit grey. That's perfect, because it means that the rain is going to soak in with all that manure and wash it down into the roots and help out and everything. Uh, we're also going to be doing uh, another wintertime orchard maintenance job, and, that is, uh, and that's a little bit of pruning. We need to, it's it's going to take us a few days to do the pruning, so we're not going to get it all done today, especially as it is a little bit wet. But um, we're certainly going to get a good amount of it done. And uh, what we need to do is when we're pruning, we need to disinfect our secateurs because you can, you can easily, especially in, a, in an orchard environment, you can easily move one disease from one tree to another. So not that I think the trees are diseased, but you never know. So it's handy to have a, a nice uh, a bleach water solution. We're going to be doing a, a one part bleach to nine parts water today. Dipping our secateurs in every time we go from one tree to another that should get rid of uh, eradicate any any problems any diseases so yeah i'm talking for a bit too long now let's get up to that orchard and let's spread some mud come in compost up from the uh, up from the compost bins uh, we found loads and loads of these absolutely beautiful they're trying to get out of my hand absolutely beautiful wriggly earthworms and they are fantastic at, uh, at helping the compost uh, break down and their their casings and everything their castings they go into the compost and uh, and they just make it absolutely fantastic well we don't need all of them, of course, and uh, although it might sound a bit, might sound a bit gruesome, um, ninety percent of them we put back, and ten percent of them we're going to uh, we're going to take, and uh, we're going to use them later on in the video. Uh, it's it's lovely and cloudy, and obviously a bit drizzly, and that's perfect conditions for bass fishing. So uh, so yeah, we'll put these to good use later on. Okay, we've just about finished doing the uh, the manure spreading for the day. We haven't done the whole orchard, we've done about half of the orchard, and that's because we want to break the day up into a couple of different jobs, so we're not doing one job throughout the whole day. So, um, so yeah, we've done about half of the orchard, we've got the other half to go, but we've got the whole of the winter dormant season to do that uh, that winter orchard maintenance in here. So, um, so yeah, we'll, do, uh, we'll switch over now and we'll start doing the pruning. So we've got here some small secateurs, big secateurs, a pair of gloves, 
and a pruning saw. So yeah, let's get to it. Okay, we're here at the first cherry tree that needs pruning. Uh, it's a relatively simple task. There's not there's not too much uh, science involved to it. Uh, once you've got a few tricks down, it's 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 relatively easy. There's just a few things you need to remember. Um, we need to clean up all of the middle of the tree, the inside of the tree, because we're not going to be picking cherries in there. And also, it it means that if we clean that all up and just have the branches on the outside, somewhat like an inverted umbrella. It means that we're going to get a lot more airflow in the tree, which is going to keep it uh, a lot healthier. It's going to keep it much, much more free of diseases and pests and things like that. And it's also going to allow for better sunlight penetration, which is going to help keep the uh, keep the fruit nice and ripe and plump and strong and uh, and make the tree healthier as well as all more leaves get to the sun and everything. Um, we do need to bring the height down a little bit as well because uh, all of these branches that have grown on the inside and at the top uh, from last spring they uh, they will have added quite a few feet to the tree definitely uh, two or three feet maybe a meter to the tree in height so we need to bring those down we're pruning them to dwarf size and uh, that means that we want to keep them at around the two and a half meter sort of size no more no more than three meters really because that's going to mean that we're we're having to bring uh, extra ladders up here during the harvest season uh, unnecessarily we don't really want to be bringing too many ladders up here and doing all of our picking at the tops of the tree because if you if you let the trees go too tall that's where the majority of the fruit is going to be it's going to be on the outside where the sun is and at the top again where the sun is so um so we want to we want to be keeping that height nice and short keeps the tree healthier if there's ever strong storms and things it means they're much less likely to fall down and uh, and of course kill the tree so um so yeah we need to reduce that height, clean the inside, um, and yeah, help it help it get extra sunlight and extra airflow. So yeah, let's get to it. <laughs> So that's that tree pruned up now and I thought I'd just show you this branch here this is all this spring's growth so it really does it is quite necessary to, to prune because otherwise the trees will get carried away with you this this branch here is a good a good meter long so that's one year's worth of growth so it really does need doing um, yeah the sun is now setting we've got this tree all pruned up and it's now looking much better it's got um, it's got a big open area in the middle where the air and the sunlight can get to now um, yeah we've done we've done quite a lot of work today we've worked for from, uh, from dawn till dusk pretty much uh, the only job left to do now is to shut the animals away and yeah I think we've earned some downtime so me and my dad tomorrow we're gonna have a bit of a father and son bonding time we're gonna do some riverside recreation so it's a last minute a last minute idea of ours considering we found so many worms today in the compost heap so yeah see you tomorrow and we'll uh, we'll get our fishing rods ready now 
Okay, it's the next morning and we're up in our uh, in our local village here and you can see the uh, the gorgeous Cerrado Estrella mountain in the background there And it's actually it's got a bit of snow on the top because we've had uh, we've had a little bit of uh, drizzly weather the last couple of days and uh, Yeah, this morning me and my father we're gonna go fishing. We're gonna go largemouth bass fishing uh, Although it's still quite chilly uh, the bass don't mind the cold weather so much so uh, so yeah But the um, the fishing licenses here our fishing licenses have now run out They run every year from the uh, the first of January to the 31st of December so uh, so we need to get a new one now being the beginning of uh, the beginning of January and uh, the place where we get that is the um, is the multibank or the uh, the ATM machine so yeah I'm gonna show you how to get a fishing license okay so this is the main screen on the multibank and you've got uh, how much is in your account the uh, transfers and direct debits payments and other services this is the button that we need and then at the top here you've got one that says uh, the state and public sector and then when you click on there, you've got um, the fishing licenses here, which is number four. And then you've got a uh, seawater or freshwater. We're going to do freshwater because we don't live near the coast. And then you've got uh, a national license, a southern license, central license, and a north license. I need a central license, and then you have to put in your identification number. So I'll put that in. The license costs twelve euros thirty. It's gone up in recent years. It used to be about about three or four euros or something. It's uh, it's gone up a fair bit. And here's my fishing license. Good for a year, so I can go fishing again. Okay, me and my father, we're now down at our local lake, Barajang de Pisco. It's the closest lake to uh, to where we live. And uh, yeah, the sun's brightened up this morning, so that's a nice change from yesterday. And uh, and yeah, that was uh, that was quite a wet one yesterday. But yeah, it should be a nice day for bass fishing today. Um, it's relatively chilly, but that shouldn't affect us too much because the bass uh, the bass don't mind cold water really. We've got our we've got our worms, some of the worms from our compost bin, what we collected yesterday. We've got our fishing rods. And yeah, we're eager to get them in the water, so let's go. Okay, that's us just about done fishing for the day. We spent a few hours down here. It's been really, really lovely just sitting down and chatting with my father. It's been nice. We don't do it often enough, really. Um, yeah, we haven't caught any any fish today. We were we were fishing for a largemouth bass, but um, yeah, the bass don't mind the cold weather so much. They don't mind the cold water, but um, this dam is very, very deep. Uh, so most of the time, the, the bass during the the cold weather they will go they will venture down into the depths a little bit more. So uh, so I'm assuming that's why we why we didn't catch any. But um, I'll, I'll leave it for fishing now. Uh, me and Dad will nip back to the farm. 
uh, we're, we're hungry so we're gonna go have some lunch uh, looks like it'll have to be shop bought fish though but yeah <laughs> okay let's go back home Okay, so we're now back from fishing. We're in the farmhouse and we are continuing on our fishy theme for the afternoon here in the kitchen. Uh, we're gonna be making a lovely warming uh, winter dish, which is a, a fisherman's pie. And that should be, uh, should be nice on a, on a nice chilly day like today is, so it should be good. So here we've got some, uh, some big potatoes that are from our own veg patch here. They're a nice, uh, all round of these potatoes. Uh, they're waxy and flowery, uh, so they're good for most things. Uh, we need them to be quite flowery because we're gonna be making a nice mash on the top of the, uh, the fisherman's pie. Uh, what else have we got? We've got some prawns, we've got some yellow onions, we've got some spring onions, a nice mature aged uh, sheep cheese there, so that's nice and hard. Some salt, some butter, some peas, uh, a bell pepper, some full fat milk, and here for the fish, we've got some wild pollock and, uh, and some sole fillets. Uh, I had my uh, fishmonger do those for me. And um, yeah, they're a nice, they're a nice sustainable uh, substitute to using like a, a cod or something like that. So a nice sustainable fish. So yeah, let's make the fisherman's pie. Okay, that's another week over and done with now on the farm. And we've, uh, we've had a really, really lovely week actually. Um, I, do, I do like the winter maintenance. It, uh, it makes a nice refreshing change from, uh, from all of the, the summer jobs where we're sweating and uh, working away hard. It's, it's nice in the winter. Uh, although your days are shorter, but you, you, you get to work for uh, quite a few hours of the day in the nice cool temperature. It is lovely. But now, uh, now that's done for another year. And um, yeah, what else have we done? We've uh, we've been fishing. We didn't catch anything. We didn't have uh, we didn't have much luck today. I put that down to the cool temperatures. But at least we've got our fishing licences. And um, in all honesty, me and my father, we weren't we weren't going fishing to catch fish. We were going fishing to uh, to spend some time together. So uh, so we we achieved that. So that's good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we come back and we made that lovely fisherman's pie. Um, it's been it's been a lovely week uh, all round. In all honesty, but yeah. 
Thank you very, very much for watching. Um, I'd just like to say as well that um, that we've now started putting um, subtitles on our videos. Uh, Mariana and I, we've um, we've been working away and uh, making making all of the uh, the Portuguese subtitles. So yeah, click that closed caption button down below, and uh, you'll be able to watch uh, watch subtitles on our videos now. That'd be handy, of course, if you're Portuguese and you speak Portuguese, or um, or if um, if you're trying to learn Portuguese, that might be quite handy. Be able to see all of the words written along the bottom of the screen, and maybe pick up a word here and there. I don't know, but should be good. But yeah, thanks very much for watching. Uh, we really appreciate it. I hope you all have a marvelous, marvelous week ahead, and uh, I'll see you all again next week. Bye.